Welcome to this week's EMBN show where we've got lots going on, including Steve looking at this very exciting new Levo. Yeah, we've got all the latest news, a great looking home build, and of course, the bike vaults. So stick around, it's going to be a good one. Right, time then to throw over to Steve to check out this soil search in Levo. Hey folks, welcome to the head of Turbo here in Cham in Switzerland. Uh, and just to give you a heads up, we've got some amazing stories coming from the HQ of Turbo in the next few months, so tune into them. But today, I'm happy to announce that I've come to pick up my all new Levo in custom colors. Uh, I'm not actually, it's a, it, this is a separate story. And I'm joined now by Lionel, Lionel Girardin. Did I get that right? Yeah, you get it pretty good, huh? Uh, Lionel, um, soil searching, it's a, it, this is a one-off bike, right? It's, it's, a, it's a series of bikes, but it's a limited edition we do. We start in uh, 2018 uh, uh, to, to do this program. The goal is to create the bike to support the bike community. Uh, some, some of the bikes go to the, to the digger and to the- The diggers. The diggers. <laughs> Let's call it the diggers. Well, <laughs> yeah. So how many? So these are the people that create trails, right? They are the people who create trails, who maintain the trails. We call them the gardeners also. Right. Yeah. And they are the people we want to support. So what we do is we provide them a bike, but also we can use the bikes for uh, auctions mm -hmm. and making sure they get some money. Just, you know, we support in the last two years, we support like 50 uh, guys who have been uh, trail builders. And 50 gardeners? Yeah. Worldwide? Worldwide. Right. And 200 days of uh, digging support by I was I was going to say to you, so you're actually paying for some trail digging and maintenance. Exactly. So these 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 gardeners then have got a, a limited, they've, they've, got, they've got like a, a budget, they've got a, a quota that they need to... They need to build a certain amount of trails per year, right? Yeah, they, and they have to, to build a perfect trail for our bikes also, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the deal. They have to so make sure it works. I, I'm interested in this. I think, I think I might be going into a bit of a minefield here. So are these people, these uh, men and women, girls and boys around the world, are they responsible for building uphill and downhill trails? They have to, that's why they have, a, they, they have a turbo. I think it's switch. At the beginning, we provide them stem jumpers. Mm -hmm. And now since, uh, since three years, we gave them either uh, a Levo SL, either a Levo. And the guys are so pleased because, you know, they can access faster the trail. They can take the tool with them, but also they consider the uphill as part of the, of yeah. the, the creation of the trail, not only the downhill. It's funny. I think it's very, it's very interesting how we change, how we, we dig and maintain trails. Uh, it's quite funny, actually. I've got a close mate called Tattoo Dave. Dave, you watching? Nice one. Uh, be careful of that electric chainsaw, by the way, Dave. Uh, Dave maintains the trails sort of in the south of England and some in Wales as well. What does it take, is this is the question, what does it take actually to become one of the gardeners? You, you have to, to be identified. I mean, what you do is there is a website, you can go on specialized.com slash search, search, soil searching, sorry. And from there you can apply and show what you do, how you do with your community. Mm -hmm. And there is also a thing is I think the community is small and yeah. people are speaking. So if you're a good guy and a good gardener, uh, people know them. And they come to specialize most of the time, even come to you and say, hey, do you want to be part of that? Well, our goal are is you, really are you, to are you, be... Are you coming to me with <laughs> offering me this bike? <laughs> He's asking for a long time. 25 years huh? of trail building experience? Yeah. Could be. Come uh, on, I've got to be on the list, right? S, S, S4, I doesn't fit you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about the color job there, talk about the paint job. It's a beautiful bike, isn't it? I mean, it, it kind of goes with, with the sort of, you know, hidden in the woods, yeah. tan walls, the green. Yeah, kind of orange. jungles. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the goal is always to make a unique bike and something you can really notify and very different from the other. There is also something as you can see on this bike, there is some special tires, but those tires you can buy it on the, on the, on the website and at the dealer. And as soon as you buy one of those tires, either a butcher or eliminator, with those uh, side casing and with the green logo on, mm -hmm you will give the money, you will invest in those tires, go directly into the community nice. of, uh, of uh, trail riding and trail building. Perfect. So it's, it's really, our goal is to do donation. We know we, we have to have the good trail to ride good bikes, so they go really together. 
Perfect. So, folks, if you're a responsible uh, trail creator uh, in any part of the world, uh, I'll leave uh, Lionel's uh, mobile on the, in the notes down below. You just give him a give him a direct call. Give me a call, Lionel. Thanks for that. Thank you. That is a great looking bike. A real incentive to get out there, isn't it? And it help is. build those trails. Nice looking bike like that. Great stuff from Spec. Very nice. Right, should we do some news, Chris? Yes. Should we let's do get some news? I love this news. Brand new e-bike race team from Yeti. Yep, it's cool. I love this, cool. I love this. Yeti Shimano EP Racing, and it's got powerhouses on them. Australia's Mick Hanna, who of course was, uh, he didn't retire, did he? He just sort of stepped down from downhill racing. Yeah, yeah. Super powerful rider, and of course, Enduro megastar Keegan Wright as well. Getting yeah. some power uh, into their Shimano motors on those Yeti E160 bikes. I think partnership with Mick's downhill skills Keegan's enduro skills mixed in with that capable Yeti E160. We're going to see some good stuff. I think. We are going to see some good stuff. Mm -hmm. And imagine, right? I mean, Mick Sick Hanna mm -hmm. was famous for throwing out the old uh, suicides was, yeah, yeah. in every, pretty much every race he did. Yeah. Is he going to be doing it in enduros? Mm -hmm. I reckon. I think it's great to see all these sort of. Uh, not retired, but what would you call it? Slightly aging downhill superstars crossing over to uh, e-bikes gives them a bit of an extended career, doesn't it? Yeah, no. I mean, everyone's career is extending now. But look at what look at what Sam Hill did with yeah. it. Yeah, he's done. Some Turned himself stuff. into one of the most iconic riders in history because he did both so well. And not forgetting, obviously, Nico Vulios as well. Massive career on downhill mountain bikes and stepped across to e-mountain bikes and still been smashing the field. He's so. all right, isn't he? He's all right. <laughs> he's pretty handy. <laughs> More news, Canadian brand Da Vinci have got a couple of new bikes for us to take a look at. First up, we've got the E-Troy. Mm -hmm. um, this is their kind of all-mountain build. So it does uh, it all kind of bike. Does think, it yeah. all. Um, travel 150 mil rear 160 front. Mm -hmm. It's a 29er. It's got the Shimano EP8 motor. 725 watt hour battery. Mm -hmm. um, it's available in a black and an evergreen or a red red. Nice, red red. Um, yeah, red red. Um, and it's got room for a bottle too. Nice. It's a good looking bike. On there. Yeah, I think if you're more into that gravity style of riding, we've got the E Spartan coming in. So that's slacker geometry and bigger travel than that E Troy. So you've got 170 mil at the rear, 180 mil at front, 29 inch wheels, Shimano EP8 motor on there. Uh, battery rise again, 725 watt hours. Um, again, you've got that room for the bottle. I think that's really cool on like a gravity style bike to have mm. that room on the down tube for the bottle. And the charger that comes with these bikes is a supercharger. So just two hours of charging is going to give you two hours, uh, is going to give you an 80% uh, charge after just two hours of plugging that battery in. So that is not quick bad. lunch stop, you bang your battery back on charge and have 80% ready to go and shred. Yeah, and both bikes <coughs> coming in at just under $8,000. Um, the E-Troy 7599, and then we've got the E-Spartan coming in at 7,799. So a little bit more, but a little bit more travel. So yeah, a couple of nice looking bikes there. Okay, it's that moment in the show where I always like to say a great way to support us is this, head over to the shop and get some merch, mm -hmm. right? But, but Chris, where the hell is my merch? I haven't got, any, you've got all this cool new stuff know, coming good, out. Isn't it? Super stealth looking t-shirts, <laughs> they feel lovely. Yeah. I haven't got any of them. Oh, you need to get your order in, Mark. There's loads of kit in there. Got all the fresh new casual drop just coming actually. So you get your order in as well as you guys watching as well. Head over to the shop, details are up on screen. And whilst you're there too, you need to order your tickets for the festival, Mark. Tell them about it. Oh yeah, the Global Bike Festival is gonna be so brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be going on epic rides each day. I've, I'm starting to see the schedule coming together now. It's looking good. And it's look, we're going to be doing the shows live. Um, we're going to have loads of special guests. We're going to have uh, Chris Acri there. He, and he, he sent me a text, should I bring my e-bike? I was like, yes, you should bring your e-bike. <laughs> um, it's going to be amazing. And, and that's not all of it. I mean, mm. all of the GCN guys are there too. So there's going to be so many different types of bikes. It's going to be such a great festival. Mm. Um, and a really cool way for us all to hang out together, have a great time. Um, there's going to be a bit of partying. And the DJ lineup ain't too bad. Yeah, sounds good. 16th yeah. to the 19th of June out of Saarbrück, Austria. And if you haven't got your tickets, again, that's going to be in the description down below. So hopefully, we'll see you there. Coming up on the channel this week, we've got a great week of content as always. On Friday, we've got Steve checking out all the goings on over at Flyer Bikes. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Sunday, uh, we've got the off the shelf versus home build video, mm -hmm. which I'm presuming, having not seen it yet, 
It's going to be one of the shortest videos ever because the answer is off the shelf. <laughs> no, so off the shelf build, uh, off the shelf bike. So you could like the bike, you could walk into a bike shop and buy versus a super pimp home build bike. So no, no, I got really it. I got it. I got what it was. <laughs> it's just the answer is still definitely off the shelf. <laughs> You're okay. Well, tune into Sunday to find that one out. <laughs> Let's take a look at what you guys have been saying in the comments around our videos, and especially the does crank length matter video. Oh, hot topic. I mean, I think it really, really does matter. Um, let's see what you think. Darren Pick says, I bent the OEM cranks on my 2020 Kinevo and went with a set of, set of Miranda 155 cranks. It was game changing for me. Bigger is not always better. Mm. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. Yeah. So dropping like 20 mil, I'm guessing off the cranks, usually like That's 175, 170, aren't they? That's so, a big jump. Yeah, give you a bit more clearance, I suppose, for pedal strikes and things like that. It's good. Uh, BH is saying, I have a 2021 Trek Rail and went with 155 mil crank length. And what a big difference. Almost no pedal strikes and my knees and hips feel so much better. Um, it's so good, he even stuck them on his regular bike. Didn't have to change my seat height. And he says the cranks were Miranda and he picked them up for around $30. So. Wow, I, I can't believe he went down to 155s on his normal bike too. Man, That's very, very short. That's really short, isn't it? I would. I used to run 170s mm. like pretty much religiously, but yeah. sometimes 175s. I've, I've never swapped down. It would oh. be interesting to try, but I think I just sort of learn yeah. when to pedal and use your yeah. motor over run and just yeah. like read the terrain ahead, knowing where Almost like thinking of a climb and you know like your footprint of where your cranks are going to be and just looking yes. out for that stuff yeah. is pretty vital. Um, Stuart Jackson pretty much agrees with what I said just then. He says, practice makes perfect. Everyone taps a pedal from time to time. Just keep going, you will get less as technique improves. So, yeah, that's yeah. true. Picking that's that line, true. thinking about where these pedals I are I don't falling. know. If I hardly ever strike my yeah. hands on the Not ground. Not even on your new hand bike. <laughs> no, it's, hard. it's very hard to get a pedal <laughs> strike. <laughs> Right, it is a bit of tech, a very interesting looking bike. Looks a bit like something out of the Mandalorian, Chris. Looks like a mad bull, doesn't it? With the bar ends and that front mounted battery. Looks like a bull from the front. Yes, yeah, very cool looking mm. bike. It's from Alcino and it's his custom build. He's over in Portugal exploring the Douro vineyards mm -hmm. in the Douro region. Nice. Um, very nice, in the north of Portugal. Uh, tell us about his bike, Chris. It's so full on. the frame is based on the Biconet from Canada. The motor is a modified Bafang M620, so it's got 2,000 watts with a magnesium enclosure and a phase runner controller. He says you can almost get 200 newton meters of torque out of this bike. Whoa! So they'll go up anything. It's got two removable batteries, so it's got 1,450 watt hours, and also has a custom 500 watt hour. Uh, battery inside the top tube, so it's got nearly 200, uh, 2,000 watt hours of power. Made for long tours and exceptional off-road exploration, apparently. I mean, it's pretty kitted out, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's got some serious pannier mounts on there as well. Some so he serious tyres. He obviously does really go for it. Yeah. Um, it is a phenomenal looking bike. Mm -hmm. um, it's got so much going on. Very interesting. Can you beat it? If you can, send it mm -hmm. into us and you could be Tech of the Week next week. Yeah, definitely. Love seeing all those crazy looking bikes. And I think that takes the uh, biscuit for me. Mm. Right, it's time for Where in the World to see where you guys and girls have been riding your e-mountain bike all over the world. What yeah, have got? Um, this is great because it's right near where I live, actually. Nice. This is Phil on his 2022 white. Mm -hmm. um, and he's in the hills between Ponticilli and Talibont, um, up in the Brecon Beacons, basically, which is a lovely, lovely part of the world. Amazing. Um, yeah, big news, full battery it? day, he said. Yeah, yeah well, very, nice. very uh, nice. Next up, we've got the shot in from Colin. He's on his Trek Rail 9.7 out in Lord's Hill, Snohomish, Washington. Uh, out for a day with his buddy Mark, shredding trails. That looks a really cool shot, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it a fantastic photo. Really like nice. that. Um, and lastly, for Where in the World, look at this. This is Aaron's custom thock. Uh, and he's in Malvino in Italy, um, over Mal uh, looking back over Lake Malvino. Mm -hmm. Great looking place. Meeting um, up with all the other thockers, I think they call them, don't they? Uh, the meets, thockers, yes. Yeah. The, the bike designed um, by the uh, downhill legend Ste Stefan Migliorini. Mm, nice I think that's right, that, isn't it? Yeah. Right, enough of where in the world. Should we head into your favourite part of the show? Shall we? Let's do it. The bike vault. Come on. Right, it's time for something similar to what you might have seen on another show once. It's the bike vault on EMBN. 
<laughs> um, let's have a look at these bikes. This is Dwayne's or Bear H10, um, Nose Hill in Calgary is the location. Finally, spring in the foothills of the Rockies. Um, what are those bikes like, Chris? Really they good, yeah. It's sort of that in, interim mid-ground, got that lower power but longer range, but I yeah. think bang on the money, really. I think that yeah. shot is bang on the money too. It's super nice for me, so ring that bell. Right next up, we got this in from Brendan. He's got a 2022 High Bike All Trail 5 out in Haworth Moor in West Yorkshire. Loving mm. the videos on the channel and he's getting out there exploring. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, well, it's a tough week this week, so it's a nice. It's definitely nice. Mm -hmm. It's definitely nice. Um, but it's a tough week this week for some very sharp bikes. I definitely. mean, take this one from Richard, his Special Evo Alloy. Um, this is in Hertfordshire. Um, well, the Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire border. Yeah, just that base um, model of bike, but yeah, he's loving it, getting out there. Again, it's a, ni it's a nice, mm. it's not quite reaching the heights, but it's um, definitely capable. Next show, we've got Scott here. He's got a Voodoo Zubop E. He's out on Clumber Park, exploring everywhere in the park. What do you think of that? And he's got some- uh, I'm not, I'm not sale, sold on this angle, Chris. This I'm angle, not, this angle's not helping it. I'm not sold on the angle of that water bottle under the down tube. Imagine uh, all the debris you could- uh, Yeah, no, that's true. But it sounds like he's on a great ride. Yeah, definitely a nice on that one. Next <coughs> one is, oh, here we go. This is quite a nice shot. This is Scott's Giant E-Trance Pro 2. Um, and he's uh, exploring the forest with friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the shot. It's cool, isn't it? I like the shot. Very natural it's, looking it's shot. It's drive side, pedals at three o'clock. It's, it, it's virgin on. You Go decide, on you decide, Chris. What is Super it? nice. Super nice. Right, next up, we've got another bike in from Scott. Not the same Scott, a different one. Uh, he's got a Yeti 160E out on Lake Coniston. 56, and this, he's 56 years old, and this, this is his first bike after 21 years of riding mountain bikes. Uh, wow. He's loving it, getting out there, yeah. getting a few upgrades on the go. Keegan, um, and Keegan and Mick would be proud. They would be. And I think they'd give you a super, a super nice for that one. Um, and next up, we have got a Specialized Levo from Nick in San Marcos in California. That is a beautiful looking bike, yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. That colorway Almost, is really, really pretty. I thought you had some funky color uh, tires on there, but it's just the color of the, uh, yeah, dirt, the dirt from the trails, isn't it? Uh, I think that's a super nice too. Wow, giving them away. You probably super think nice. this is a super nice as well, because I know you're a big fan of the uh, tan walls. This is Lee, he's got a giant Talon E plus Three uh, out of Melbourne, Australia. A chilly but beautiful calm winter's morning ride around the Bay Trail. Yeah, I'm, well, I think I'm safe to say this. The, we, the bell's safe at this moment. It, it, it's nice, mm -hmm. but I, I'd say this is an acquired taste. It is. Isn't I, it? I think that's fair to say. I mean, the nice tan looking. walls are very, very white. Mm -hmm. um, the frame's really interesting. It is, isn't it? Shape and uh, geometry. I wonder how that rides. I wonder oh, how yeah, that rides. like an interim bike, I suppose. A bit of a yeah. tourer slash commute slash mountain bike. Nice, it's nice, it's nice. Um, next up, <laughs> well, the final bike. Well, I mean... Oh, come on. Because it's got the words Cannondale in it, I suppose. It's, it's, it's a super nice Cannondale Matero in... Um, it's in a beautiful colourway. Out it's Swinley Forest. In, it's in Swinley Forest, which is in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's a great looking bike. It deserves the bell. What more can we say? What a great way to end the bike vault Definitely. this week. And it is the end of the show too. So let us oh. know about what you think about the new Levo coming from uh, Specialized and that s soil search and colorway. It's a pretty cool uh, concept there going on from the guys at Specialized. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's show. Make sure you subscribe to us here on the channel and order your tickets for the bike festival and get in that merch shop too. We shall see you next week. Bye.